18 prisoners were executed in the United States in 2020. Five states and the federal government carried out executions. These are their names and crimes committed. The first person executed in 2020 was John Gardner. He was executed for the 2005 Collin County murder of his soon-to-be ex-wife. Tammy Gardner was shot and killed in her home weeks before the couple's divorce was finalized. She called the emergency before she died to say her husband had shot her. John Stephen Gardner was 64 at the time of his execution. He was executed by lethal injection on the 15th of January 2020 in Huntsville. Donnie Lance. Lance was convicted in 1999 of murdering his ex-wife, Joy Lance, and her boyfriend, Dwight Wood. He has maintained his innocence in the killings and sought DNA testing of evidence from the crime scene. His two adult children, Jesse Lance and Stephanie Cape, not only supported that request, but also asked the Georgia Board of Pardons and Paroles to grant clemency. Georgia executed Donnie Lance on January 29, 2020 after his requests for DNA testing and a plea for clemency supported by the children he and murder victim Joy Lance shared were denied. He was 65 years at the time of his execution. Abel Ochoa, in 2002. Ochoa walked out of his Dallas bedroom, high on crack, and shot his seven-year-old and nine-month-old daughters, wife, father-in-law and two sisters-in-law. The only survivor was one of his wife's sisters, who ran to a neighbor's house after being shot. Ochoa and his wife, Cecilia, were married nearly nine years. About two years before the murders, he started smoking crack, he said at trial. Over time, his drug use escalated. He took money from his wife and took out small loans to buy drugs. Months before the shooting, he walked off the job he had for more than a decade. At 47, Ochoa had been on death row for nearly 17 years. He was executed by lethal injection on the 6th of February 2020, at Huntsville, Texas. Nicholas Todd Sutton, he was 18 years old when he killed his grandmother Dorothy Sutton, his high school friend John Large and another man, Charles Almond. Sutton didn't receive a death sentence until he fatally stabbed fellow inmate Carl Esteb six years later, in 1985. Tennessee executed death row inmate Nicholas Todd Sutton, in the electric chair on the 20th of February 2020. He was 58 years at the time of his execution. Nathaniel Woods. The murders that Nathaniel Woods was convicted of took place on June 17, 2004, in Birmingham, Alabama. Four police officers stormed a drug house, while Nathaniel Woods and Carrie Spencer were inside. Spencer had an SKS rifle when he heard the officers, while Woods was in the kitchen. After Woods had surrendered to the officers, Spencer came downstairs to see two officers pointing guns at him. Spencer fired shots at all four police officers, killing three out of the four. The fourth officer was injured, but survived. Woods ran out of the house when he heard the gunshots. Spencer and Woods were both charged with the murders despite Woods never firing a weapon. Spencer stated Woods was not involved. 
The execution of Nathaniel Woods occurred on March 5, 2020, at Hellman Correctional Facility in Alabama. In what was described by many as a controversial execution due to skepticism about his culpability and the fairness of his trial. He was 43 years at the time of his execution. Walter Barton, he was sentenced to death for the 1991 murder of Gladys Culler, the elderly manager of the Southwest Missouri Mobile Home Park where he had lived. Barton went to Culler's trailer twice on October 9, 1991, telling neighbors that he needed to borrow money from her. Culler was later found practically nude, lying on the floor between her bed and closet with more than 50 stab wounds, including two large slash wounds across her neck and another two slash wounds to her abdomen. Walter Barton had long maintained he was innocent of killing Gladys Culler, and his case was tied up for years due to appeals, mistrials and two overturned convictions. His fate was sealed when neither the courts nor Gov. Mike Parson intervened. At the age of 64, he was executed on the 19th of May 2020, by lethal injection, in Missouri. Walter Barton was the 1518th person executed in the United States since 1976, the 90th person executed in Missouri and the 1,338th person executed by lethal injection. Billy Joe Wardlow, he was 18 years, 6 months, and 19 days old on June 14, 1993, the morning he and his girlfriend, Tanya Fulfer, set out to steal Carl Cole's Chevy Silverado. In their minds the theft would be the first step toward a new life, one far from the parents who had hurt them and the poverty they had known in rural northeast Texas. The idea was to drive the pickup to Montana, change their identities, and begin life anew. The plan's magical thinking revealed itself as Wardlow stood on Cole's front porch at dawn. Wardlow asked to borrow a phone. Cole handed one through the door. As Wardlow pretended to make a call, Cole tried to shut the door. Wardlow brought out the 45 he he'd stolen from his mother hours before. To Wardlow's surprise, the 82-year-old Cole charged him, grabbed his arm and began to push the much larger Wardlow backwards off the porch. As Cole's fingers grabbed for control of the gun Wardlow shot. Cole fell dead. Wardlow and Fulfer were arrested two days later, having made it as far as South Dakota. Billy Joe Wardlow, who is 45 and has been on death row in Texas since he was 20 was executed on July 8th, by lethal injection in Huntsville, Texas. Daniel Lewis Lee, he was an American white supremacist and convicted murderer, who was sentenced to death and executed for the murders of William Frederick Mueller, Nancy Ann Mueller, and their daughter Sarah Elizabeth Powell. Lee and his accomplice, Chevy Keho, murdered the family at their home in Arkansas, on January 11, 1996. Keho was found guilty of the triple murder in a separate trial and sentenced to three consecutive terms of life imprisonment without parole. Upon conviction by the U.S. federal government, Lee stayed on death row for 21 years before he was scheduled to be executed on July 13, 2020, but on that date, a U.S. district judge blocked the execution, citing unresolved legal issues. Thereafter, on July 14, 2020, 
The Supreme Court of the United States ruled that the execution could proceed. It was scheduled for 4 a.m. that same day. After another short delay, he was executed at 8.07 a.m. On the 14th of July 2020, at the age of 45, at the United States Penitentiary, Tarot, Indiana. He was the first person executed by the U.S. federal government since 2003. Wesley Ira Perkey, he was convicted and sentenced to death for kidnapping, raping and killing 16-year-old Jennifer Long in 1998. Miss Long was last seen at East High School in Kansas City, Missouri on January 22 that year, when she skipped lessons. Perky lured the teenager into his pickup truck outside a grocery store. At the time Perky, aged 46, was high on crack and drove the girl to his home where he raped her and stabbed her to death. Using an electric chainsaw, he dismembered Miss Long's body, and partially burned it in his fireplace. He then took her remains and drove them 300 kilometers to a septic pond in Clearwater, Kansas, where he dumped them. Jennifer Long's remains have never been found. Nine months later, in October 1998, Perky beat an 80-year-old polio sufferer to death with a claw hammer. Perky had been working for a plumbing company and had gone to the home of Mary Ruth Bales to fix a kitchen tap. Neighbors saw him trying to burn the woman's body and he was arrested. Perky's execution was carried out on the 16th of July 2020 two days after the U.S. government conducted its first federal execution in 17 years, also at Tarot, of white supremacist Daniel Lewis Lee. Dustin Lee Honkin and Angela Jane Johnson, both were convicted of the 1993 murders of five people in Iowa. The victims were related to a drug trial against Honkin, Honkin was involved in the manufacturing of methamphetamine and one of his dealers was set to testify against him. And so Honkin and Johnson murdered him along with his girlfriend and her two daughters. A few months later, the fifth victim, also a former dealer, was murdered. Honkin was sentenced to death and executed by the federal government on July 17, 2020, the first defendant from Iowa to be executed since 1963. He was 52 years at the time of his execution. Johnson was also sentenced to death, the first woman sentenced to death by a United States federal jury since the 1950s. But the sentence was overturned in 2012, and she was re-sentenced to life without parole in 2014. Lesmond Mitchell, he was the only Native American on death row, he was executed at the federal prison in Tarot. On the 26th of August 2020, Mitchell, 38 was a member of the Navajo Nation. He was convicted of killing 63-year-old Alice Slim and her 9-year-old granddaughter, Tiffany Lee, in Arizona in 2001. Mitchell had just turned 20 when he was arrested alongside a teenager named Johnny Orsinger for the gruesome killings of a 63-year-old woman named Alice Slim and her 9-year-old granddaughter. Tiffany Lee. The young men and their victims were all Navajo. Slim had been taking her granddaughter to see a medicine man in New Mexico when they were attacked. After stabbing Slim more than 30 times, the killers put her body in the back seat with her granddaughter and drove into the Chuska Mountains north of Window Rock, 
the capital of the Navajo Nation. There, they murdered the child and decapitated the bodies. Keith Dwayne Nelson Nelson was sentenced to death in 2002 for the kidnapping, rape, and murder of 10-year-old Pamela Butler from Kansas. In October 1999, Nelson abducted Butler, while she rollerbladed outside, near her home. Witnesses, including her sisters, saw the kidnapping happen, but Nelson was able to get away. A few days later, Butler's body was found in a wooded area, behind a church, in Grain Valley, Missouri. After a short manhunt, Nelson was captured and pled guilty to the crime. On October 25, 2001, Nelson pleaded guilty in the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Missouri to the kidnapping and unlawful interstate transportation of a child for the purpose of sexual abuse which resulted in death, and he was sentenced to death. He was executed with lethal injection, on the 28th of August 2020, at the age 45. William Emmett Leroy, Leroy was convicted of the October 2001 robbery, rape and murder of 30-year-old Joanne Lee Tisler in Gilmer County, Georgia. A jury sentenced Leroy to death in 2004. William Emmett Leroy, 50, was executed on the 9th of September 2020, with lethal injection for the killing of 30-year-old nurse Joanne Lee Tisler in Georgia, whom he blamed for putting a spell on him. His death is the sixth federal execution since the Justice Department ended a 17-year hiatus on the practice. Christopher Andre Vialva Vialva was convicted in the slaying and robbery of an Iowa couple when he was 19. He and others, including his co-defendant and fellow death row inmate, Brandon Bernard, Carjack Todd and Stacy Bagley on their way home from church. The couple was kept in the trunk, while the young men tried to pull money from the victim's bank accounts and pawn a wedding ring. Eventually, Vialva shot both of the victims in the head while they were in the trunk, and Bernard set the car on fire. The crime was deemed a federal crime, not a state one, because the killing occurred on a secluded part of the Fort Hood U.S. Army post in Killeen. The 40-year-old was the first black man executed in the 2020 federal executions. He was executed on the 24th of September 2020. Orlando Hall. Hall was convicted of kidnapping and killing Lisa Renee in 1994. The murderer, along with three other men, snatched the schoolgirl from her Arlington, Texas, home. The revenge attack on Renee was to get back at the girl's two brothers over a botched $5,000 marijuana deal. Hall was a marijuana trafficker in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, who would sometimes buy his drugs in the Dallas area. He arrived in Dallas on September 24, 1994 and met two men at a car wash and gave them $4,700 with the expectation they would return later with the marijuana. Those two men were Renee's brothers. Mr. Hall was 23 years old at the time of the crime, now 49. Mr. Hall has spent the years since his trial living on death row. He was executed on the 19th of November 2020. Brandon Anthony Micah Burner, he was then convicted for the 1999 robbery, 
kidnapping, and murder of Todd and Stacy Bagley. He was sentenced to death for the murders and remained on death row until his execution in the 10th of December 2020, by lethal injection. Bernard spent most of his childhood in Killeen, Texas. In his early teens, he began committing crimes such as burglary and joined a neighborhood gang. His crimes and rebellious behaviors led him to being kicked out of several schools and prosecuted in the juvenile criminal justice system. In 1999, Bernard and four teenaged accomplices robbed, kidnapped, and murdered two youth pastors. After forcing the pastors into the trunk of their car, one accomplice, Christopher Andre Vialva shot both in the head before Bernard set the car on fire. The remaining three teens received a range of different prison terms. One remains incarcerated. Alfred Bourgeois Bourgeois was convicted of killing his daughter in July 2002, during a work delivery at Naval Air Station Corpus Christi. He systemically abused the toddler, by punching her in the face and whipping her with an electrical cord. The monster dad beat her with a belt so hard that it broke, and Bourgeois also hit her in the head with a plastic baseball bat so many times that her head was swollen like a football. He also scratched and pulled her ears, bit her hands, feet, and forehead, and burned the bottom of her foot with a cigarette lighter. When other family members tried to clean the sores on the girl's feet, Bourgeois would stop them and jam his dirty thumb into the wounds then force her to walk on her injured feet. On March 16, 2004, a jury in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Texas found Bourgeois guilty of multiple offenses, including murder, and he was sentenced to death. Convicted killer Bourgeois was executed for raping and torturing his daughter on December 11, 2020 making him the last person executed in the year 2020. He was 56 years at the time of his execution. Thank you for watching Death Row.